everybody thank you so much for having me um it's very inspiring to be part of something so big and so brilliant so thank you um i should also warn you that you're also joined by a small toddler who's just over there watching um television so anything could happen um fingers crossed i will be allowed to complete what i want to say so um thank you for that introduction i i did indeed write this book solo um it was the product of a very difficult time in my working life and one that i would really like to help other people to avoid um, i had been working by myself as many many of us worldwide are now for six years when i looked up one day and realized that i was horribly lonely unhappy and had not succeeded in creating a life that i actually wanted in fact i hadn't thought about what kind of life i wanted in terms of work and my career at all i had just put my head down and worked which I think is a trap that many many of us fall into and um, subsequently to the book coming out I've also created a podcast which uh, deals with these issues um, because obviously when the book came out in September 2020 we were in the thick of a very strange time in work with everything changing and I realized that there were still a lot more conversations to be had on this topic um, so I wrote it because I wanted to try and be a small part of a big change. I think that one of the things I think is most important about work and how we think about work is that we need to push it slightly away from the center of our lives. Work has primacy in our, in our lives at the moment. And, um, and that's not actually a very healthy thing. Uh, it's not a very good place for it to be. And I know that sounds strange to be saying that at a conference about the future of work and as somebody who writes a lot about work, um, but I think it's a critical thing that we think about as we work with people who are constructing their careers or we are constructing our careers as we go through our lives. We need to think about how work has kind of overtaken our sense of self, particularly now, and um, our ideas about how we live and, and who we are in society. Now, hard work is not a bad thing. I work very hard, I have worked very hard. Um, so it's not about denigrating that, but it is about saying what happens to our mental health when we allow work to sit right in the very, very center of our lives. And then with smartphones and the kind of societal, cultural way that we think about work, we allow work to kind of slowly spread and grow until it touches corners of our life that it really has no right to be in. And, and I think that that, well, and the evidence shows that that is where the beginnings of burnout happen and where we find that life gets really difficult for people. So um, as part of a conversation about what the future of work looks like, I would like us very much to think, where does work sit in our lives? And I know that we hear all these messages all the time, so I'm not going to reel off loads of stats, but we have to accept the fact that between, particularly in the UK and the US, between one in four and one in six people are suffering from mental health difficulties at any, in any given year. And this year has intensified that, this, this last 15 month period has intensified that still more. So we clearly have an, a problem that we need to be dealing with. And we need, because work is such a big part of our lives, we need to take stock of the fact that those mental health problems will, to a certain degree, involve work or lack of work. Um, and we know also that entrepreneurship and solo working, which so many of us have been pushed into, Kind of intensify these risks the risk of loneliness and social isolation increases now that sounds really negative i actually don't think this is a negative moment for all that we have had an, a horrific collective experience i think that this is a hugely positive moment for work i think that this is a a, a moment where we can make a philosophical step, step change and we can positively influence the way that work is for generations to come in the future and i am so excited and delighted at the opportunity to be part of conversations like this one that allow things to begin to change. Um, because actually very little of what I write and think and talk about is the actual work that we do, despite being a specialist in work. It's actually about the way in which we build our lives around work and how we need to shift that so that we're actually building our lives in a way that allows work to kind of slot into what we need as human beings, rather than simply folding and bending ourselves around the requirements of our work. So for me, that meant sitting down with a bit of paper, <laughs> very retro, um, sitting down with a bit of paper and um, thinking about what I wanted my life to look like in 10 years time. So I was about 
um, I was about 30, I think, the first time I did this. I was, I'm 39 now. Um, and I wrote everything down on a massive bit of paper. And I started to think in the micro and the macro, what, what kind of life did I want to have? How could I kind of retrofit the way that I worked to fit the, the, the life that I wanted to live? And, and that informs every decision that I take now, um, every piece of work that I say yes or no to, every, every decision I, I take in terms of, do I want work which is about earning more money to support my family? Is that what I need to be doing now? Do I need um, less? Do I need to be focusing on money less so that I can give more time to my children? All of those things, do I need more? Do I need more time and space? Do I, everything like that, it, it's all retrofitted from this future idea. And I never had that before. I didn't have any notion of what I wanted my life to look like. And so I want to now in the work that I do, and hopefully this is something that some of you can take through too. When I talk to people, and I, and I do a lot of workshops on this, when I talk to people about how they want to construct their careers from now on, that's what I say you need to do. It's not about saying, I want to be partner by the time I'm 30. If you do, that's fine, that's great build that into your plan but it's also about saying where do you want to live what kind of house do you want um what uh what city do you want to be in do you want to be near the sea what means a lot to you do you need to be able to reach the country really quickly um do you want do you want to be able to run do you want to do you need a gym really close by like all of those things um and and then micro stuff like do you do you want um windows with a view are you going to be able to give yourself enough daylight um everything um what do you want your body to look like you know do you want to be ambitious in 10 years time or do you want to have done it and relax like everything we we can ask ourselves so many questions and and we can help other people ask those questions too so um i want to have that become the conversation that we have around careers because i think one of the problems certainly for me when i was growing up and i think this is still true to a certain extent now is that we don't tend to have these conversations with young people we don't tend to empower them to think about their lives as a broad sort of spectrum of experiences we tend when we talk about careers to think about a very kind of narrow career path and and an, and an idea of where they they want to be solely from a kind of jobs and career point of view and that just doesn't work like that's why we're seeing the epidemic of burnout globally it just doesn't work to put work in the very center of our lives um, and I think we've got a problem in the English language in particular with the way that we describe the jobs that we do we say I am a writer we say I am a bookkeeper I am a plumber we and that's not true we do our jobs we are not our jobs they are not the sole thing they are not the sole the sole component of our personality, but the way we use language allows us to kind of behave and think as though, as though that's true. Um, and we need desperately to move away from that idea. Um, so how do we do this? <laughs> how do we do this? Work is a work in progress. We have to accept that. We have to know that we're never gonna be done with this. The conversation that we have to have is gonna go throughout our entire careers. And to expect people to work in the exact same way for 30 or 40 years is really, really unrealistic. So we need to have conversations on an ongoing basis with ourselves. So perhaps that's something we do in January, something we do every month. Maybe that's something you build into your kind of uh, internal conversation as frequently as you need it to happen. The critical thing is that we keep Keep doing it and we keep making changes and we keep facilitating changes in other people's careers as well because I don't work the same way now as I did 10 years ago now I've got small children on sofas watching Peppa Pig um, and I certainly won't be working this way in 10 years time when they're teenagers and and beyond my life and my work changes all the time we're so fluid it's so dynamic and we need to build that into all of the conversations that we have about work the other thing that we need to do is we need to, um, on a micro, micro, micro level, to just to help sustain our mental health in this exactly difficult period. We need to make sure that we're giving our brains enough access to daylight. We need to, if you can, and you're working by yourself, move your desk so that you're close to a window so that you can kind of help control your circadian rhythms and you can help, uh, you can help yourself to um, be more energetic and more dynamic in the daytime and then you'll expose yourself to dusk as the evening falls so that's a really positive thing you can do if you're struggling with your work right now today um, and your mental health and you can also use that tool to help other people too um, you also need to make sure that you're taking regular breaks that within your working day and after and between your working days in the uk it's mandatory to allow people an, an 11 hour break between shifts but 
when we work by ourselves, particularly if we're solo entrepreneurs or if we're remote workers, which so many of us are at the moment, we tend to deny ourselves that. We tend to look at our emails really late at night and then first thing in the morning, I, I don't sleep for 11 hours at night. So I'm, you know, we don't allow ourselves the breaks that most um, modern economies would insist that actual employed workers have. Um, we also need to think about the food that we give ourselves and we need to make sure that we're moving during our working days. So um, those are kind of micro things that we can do. And, 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 and the book is absolutely stuffed with more um, ideas and things that you can do uh, if you're really struggling right now with your work. Um, but I'm, I'm out of time. So thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm sorry if that was like an incredibly fast talk, but thank you. <laughs>